Welcome to Untamed, our eight session series about what it means to be a godly man in this day and age. We're going to go through a few sessions where we're going to go discover what God is actually calling us to as men and, and how we should live out this truth about being a godly man, a Christ follower within the, the space of your marriage and the space of your family in the space of your workplace or, or your social areas that you are uh, finding yourself in. What does it mean to live a righteous life? What does it mean to live a godly life as a man? And there are a few things that I just want to highlight before we actually delve into today's session. It's, it's, there's these three things that we need to focus on if we want to embark on this mission to say, listen, what is the, the, the calling of men, what is the, the reason why, who are we as men, and, and where did God start this, then we need to understand three things. And the first one is that we need to learn how to understand and discover our identity, where we come from, why God made us. There's this thing about men who don't know who they are, they, they cause damage. But when we do actually discover what, why and God has made us and how He has made us, there's this harmony that, that just runs through our lives that we actually have the power to live a godly life. The second thing that we need to understand before we go into all these sessions is that we need to be committed to say, listen, we want to be transformed by God's Word and we don't want to work at it to, to modify our behavior. You see, when we open up our hearts for, for Scripture, the Bible, to, to come and, and be written upon our hearts and, and let the Holy Spirit make it alive in our hearts, there's a transformation that happens. It's not just a, I need to live now the, the, the 10 rules of being a proper Christian. want to read to you quickly it says the following do not lose sight of one simple truth the only way to be manly is first to be godly in our day men are looking for their manhood more than they are seeking God you see too many men make the mistake of studying masculinity and trying to practice what they learn without paying enough attention to their relationship with God. Do we really love Christ or is our passion more contrived and wavering than genuine and steady? Are we growing in a holiness that draws others, particularly our families, to Christ? Or do we exhibit a fervency a, and practice a conformity that merely impresses others with our zeal? You see what he's trying to get to is to say, listen guys, listen men, if you really want to be masculine, if you really want to be a manly man, you need to understand that starts with understanding who God is. It starts to come to realization in your life and it becomes apparent in the evidence of being manly becomes a fruitful thing in your life when you first discover that it's all about God. The things about God is intertwined into being masculine. 
This is what he's saying. When, when I think about the statement, I think about the, 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 the craze of, of the superhero movie um, era, if you want to call it that, the past 20 years on cinema. We get guys like Iron Man and Thor and Batman and, and Superman and all these characters, they, they had these origin story movies the past few years. And, and we've enjoyed these origin movies. And I was wondering to myself the other day, why is that so? Why are we so almost entrapped in this, in this story of Iron Man, for instance? This guy that's rich, he's got everything he wants in life, and then he ends up in a terrorist uh, uh, cave, and, and in that moment he, he sits and, and he is confronted with who he is, with what his life is bringing forth, and in that moment he goes through a journey of discovering the reason why he's actually made the way he is, and, and why he's so intellectual, and why uh, uh, he, he has the power he has. And in that, in that journey, we get entertained by his character growth throughout that whole movie. And it's my favorite Iron Man of all the Iron Man movies, right? But he, he busts out of that cave and, and he builds an Iron Man suit and then he gets to a point where uh, the crescendo of the movie is where he fully lives out his calling and his purpose. You see, I think we like those stories because we like the journey, because we can relate to the journey of discovering who we are and, and then living out this crescendo of our lives that we've now attained. The thing is with, with these movies, what we usually do, we get entertained by them, and this is the danger of these movies. It, it's, it's fully entertainment, and I can relate so well but as soon as that movie is off or it has finished, we go sit on the couch, we turn off the TV or we watch another movie and nothing of that becomes apparent in our lives. You see, I think if we start to understand how God has made us and why God has made us and find our identity, then we will also live a godly life. I think when we understand that our identity is seated so deeply in God that we will understand that we can also be heroes in this day and age. Just listen to this very famous scripture of the creation story where God decides he's going to make man. In Genesis 1 verse 26 and 27, he says, Then God said, Let us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness this doesn't mean physical but a spiritual personality and moral likeness and let them have complete listen to this complete authority over the fish of the sea the birds in the air the cattle and over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth so god created man in his own image in the image and the likeness of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Listen to this. Our identity is seated, is, is derived from, is sourced from the very essence of who God is. We need to understand that if we want to be masculine and we want to live the life God has intended for us, then we need to understand that when we are in relationship with Jesus Christ, who came to restore everything and in him he has given us the, the the true identity of who we are why we are here and he's given us a purpose then we start to live a life that takes us to a place where where we see how god works through our lives and how the righteousness of god becomes apparent you see but we we, we struggle with this because we've got a past, right? And we've got a, a present situation around us that's very difficult to navigate. And, and, and a lot of things are telling us who we are, what we should achieve. And when we achieve these things or those things, if it's becoming rich or, uh, you know, being very well built or, or dressed well or, or having, you know, a, a very expensive home, then we've arrived, then we've we've had purpose in our life, then we were successful. But this is not true. The thing is that we, we need to understand is within understanding that we come from God and, and our image and likeness, our identity is one intertwined with God. 
when we start to live that out, when we start to discover we can live that out, the more and more we will see how God has actually made us able to live godly lives. Now the thing is we are struggling with all these other voices telling us this is what masculinity is, this is what being a proper man is, all these things are are trying to divert us away from our true self. But that's where the word of God comes in. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 says the following, all scripture is God breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. (laughs) He says, scripture is God breathed. It's his very voice. It's his very truth that he has spoken over us. He says, listen, what, what, what the scripture is actually trying to say is, when you read scripture and when you open up your heart for the Holy Spirit to make it alive in your life, where you start to understand what it, what it says and, you, and you, you, you give it a chance to be written upon your heart, it will transform your life. You will start to understand who you really are. You will, you will get a, a grip on God and not on the things that this world or our enemy is telling you you need to achieve. You see, scripture will help us to teach, to teach ourselves first and then others, to rebuke what is wrong, to to correct the things that we are struggling with, to help us train in righteousness. What, What it means is to say, listen, we need to value the scriptures, the absolute truth of God, the Bible, and we need to let that become our guiding voice in our lives and the more we do this the more we have our cave moment if you want to call it that because we will be confronted with the old self that we need to lay down and we will have handles transformation a a a grounded awareness of god in our lives that that tells us listen this is your identity this is what you're actually supposed to look like and live like you see that that becomes a belief system that's changed not a behavior that's modified that's what we're trying to get to with, with actually the whole untamed thing is to say, listen, we're wild for God and we're not tamed by the things of this world. That's where my, my last point goes to is that we need to understand with understanding who we are, the image and likeness of God and, and letting God's voice, His word come, come cleanse us and come, come guide us then we start to understand that that we need to know how to do this. And I love the way Romans 12 verse 1 to 2 in the Message Bible explains it. It says this, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. We should remember this, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. (laughs) When we lay down that old self, He's saying, listen, this is the best thing you can do for God. Lay it down. Lay your dreams down. Lay the things down that's, that's weighing on your shoulders so heavily. Lay down the old self, the old way of thinking. Let God take control of this he says this don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking instead fix your attention on god you'll be changed from the inside out this is this is what we're talking about we want to transform our belief we're going to be transformed from the inside out readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you. He envelops well-formed maturity in you. You see, before we can even say we want to be masculine or or manly men, we need to understand that 
it comes with a level of maturity. We need to build maturity into our lives. We need to build the, the truth into our lives. We need to be trained up so that we can fight the fight that we need to fight. You see, but if we don't even do this, if we don't even lay down our lives and, and let Scripture come transform us and work at it to be trained up by the Holy Spirit, how can we ever stand against the, the attacks of our enemy or, or the temptations of this world? I want to challenge you. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Let, let God just be the voice that you need for your life. That's your choice to make. It's no one else's. God has laid everything down for you already. He's asking for you to do one thing. Fix your attention on Him. When you do this, you will start to understand what your identity is. When you do this, you will start to value the truth of the scriptures. And when you do this, you will let the Holy Spirit come transform your life and train you up so that you will be ready for every fight that you need to fight. So, let me end off. To be a hero in this context is what Larry Crabb said. To first be manly, we need to understand it starts by being godly. May this become your reality where you fix your attention on God in such a way that true masculinity will be shown through your life. In such a way that people around you will be aware of God's presence, aware of His love, aware of His transforming power, aware of who He is. But well, then we can actually say, listen, now we're living the way God wants us to live. May the next eight weeks be a discovery of your role as man, your identity and purpose as man, your position in Christ. May these things come revealed to you that you can live a life of righteousness, establishing his kingdom in this day and age. And that's my prayer for you for the next eight weeks. You're more than welcome to just have a discussion with each other within your groups now. Go through the scriptures. Go through some of the things that stirred in your heart while you were listening and, and discuss it and, and open up the scriptures of what you understand of it. This is why we do this in groups. And this is why we need our brothers alongside us so that we can actually build relationships together that are supportive. Enjoy.